Well, we're back in the Live to Play studio, and I'm standing right next to the stars of this review, the DLM-12 and the DLM-12S from Mackie. Both looking a little bit beaten and battle-scarred, but both still performing perfectly after their summer out on the road. The DLM-12 is a 12-inch full-range loudspeaker with a 12-inch low-frequency woofer and a 1.75-inch high-frequency compression driver. The DLM-12S subwoofer sports a high-powered 12-inch heat-treated woofer and a 3-inch voice coil. The third member of the DLM family is the DLM-8. It's almost identical in appearance to the 12, except that it has an 8-inch woofer and is considerably smaller and even lighter than the 12 is. And speaking of size, as you can see, this DLM-12 is only slightly larger than my iPad. And it weighs just 31 pounds. The handles are top mounted so it makes it very easy to load in and load out and lifting it up onto a speaker stand is a breeze so you don't have to start your gig with sweat running down your face. The DLM 12S subwoofer is only a couple of inches taller and wider than the 12 but it is about six inches deeper in order to produce the thundering bass that we expect from a subwoofer. It weighs a whopping 48 pounds, which is about half the weight of many of the better subs designed for portable sound. So now let's take a look at the back panels on both of these units and uh, check out the various setup options. Now the first thing you'll notice here on the back of the DLM-12 is this handy handle that folds out. So if you want to use this speaker as a monitor, you can do so. Just bring the handle out and you can set it at the angle that you need it to be at. Next, let's add some power. And as soon as we do, you'll notice that the bright OLED screen comes to life. Now, as I mentioned, this is the DLM-12, which, like the DLM-8, has an onboard digital mixer with two input channels, so it makes it perfect for a coffee house setup. Just plug your instrument into one channel and a mic into the other, and you're ready to go. Your gain for each channel, along with EQ and effects, is selectable with this row of switches. Channel 1, channel 2. If you wanted to increase the volume on channel 2, for example, just do so with these plus or minus switches. The system switch gives you access to your EQ, delay, effects, and feedback. The feedback destroyer is always a handy device to have. There's six speaker modes here, so you can dial in the perfect voicing for your application and alignment delay for up to 300 milliseconds, which comes in handy when using an additional delay stack in a balcony or for filling a void. For inputs, we have two XLR-TRS combo inputs and dual RCA connectors to cover mic, line, stereo, and instrument signals, as well as an XLR output to pass the signal on to the input of another speaker down the line. And you also have a switch here so that you can select just channel 1 or a mix of the two channels for your output, as well as an XLR line and mic switch. Well, moving on down to the DLM-12S subwoofer, you'll see we also have the same bright OLED screen, but our options here are a little bit different. The gain control function is the same as it does on the DLM-12 and the DLM-8, but we now have a digital crossover selection switch with presets for use with either the DLM-12 or the DLM-8, as well as Mackie's SRM series full-range loudspeakers, or to optimize the sound when used with any other full-range loudspeakers. In this case, we want to have it set for the DLM-12. And you can see that displays the crossover frequency curve. There are six total XLR connects for in-out control, two line-level inputs, two full-range outputs for side fills, and two high-pass outputs for direct connection to DLM loudspeakers, and we also have the alignment delay capability that we had on the 12 and the 8. On all of the DLM speakers, there are three memory locations for instant venue setting recall and DSP dynamic protection for amps and drivers. Now, most of the gigs I used these on over this past summer were DJ jobs, and for that application, I simply ran the outputs from my mixer rack into these two high-pass inputs on the back of the subwoofers, and then ran a short cable to a stand-mounted DLM-12 or DLM-8. 
Now, in most venues, I found that I got the best sound when the speakers were actually placed a little further out and back from the DJ table with the top boxes pointed directly toward the center of the dance floor. These speakers are pretty forgiving, so regardless of how you set them up, you'll have a good result, but with a little experimentation, you'll find that there's a sweet spot where they project the sound with such amazing imaging that in certain parts of the dance floor, you really can't tell where the sound is coming from. It just fills the floor. And no matter where you are or how many people are on the floor, it's consistent and strong everywhere.